2020. More than 200,000 COVID-19 deaths in the U.S. One million COVID-19 deaths worldwide. 33 million COVID-19 cases worldwide. 7.8 billion people at risk. 60 million health workers worldwide. One goal. Health. AmeriCares makes health happen in 93 countries around the world. 23 countries with ongoing health projects. 1,000 U.S. health centers supported. 4,000 health centers supported worldwide. 9.9 million prescriptions provided in 2019. 16.5 million medical supplies provided in 2019. $18 billion in total aid in 41 years of supporting global health. One global community. One goal. Health. Health. A topic we can all agree on. Now more than ever. Welcome to AmeriCare's Airlift Benefit live stream. I'm Tony Goldwyn. I'm an actor and a director and a producer. And most importantly tonight, I am a proud board member and longtime supporter of AmeriCare's. Health has never been more important than it is today. The world's entire population, 7.8 billion of us, is threatened by a deadly virus. On the front lines of this fight are the world's 60 million health workers, and this show is dedicated to them. By donating during the program, you will be raising critical funds for America's health programs that give health workers what they need to stay safe and save lives, both here in the United States and all around the world. And you'll be helping support AmeriCare's emergency and ongoing health programs, which improve health in more than 90 countries every year. Joining me from Los Angeles on this around the world journey of health is my friend, actor and musician, Jackie Cruz. Thank you so much, Tony. It's so good to see you, even if it's virtually. Good to see you, Jackie. Last year, we shared a stage at the AmeriCare's Airlift Benefit. In 2020, we're sharing a screen but we'll be together soon, okay? Until then, we all have to share a mission to improve health around the world, especially for people affected by poverty. I am so honored to be a part of AmeriCare's Airlift Benefit Livestream and to raise funds for the great work AmeriCare's is doing. In the next hour, we're gonna take you around the world to hear directly from the health workers you help when you support AmeriCare's. You'll meet a doctor providing care after a powerful typhoon, and we'll visit a health worker who has dedicated his life to helping refugees. You'll see the challenges nurses and others face during COVID-19 pandemic, and we'll see how the everyday disaster of poverty and discrimination puts so many lives at risk. You can support health workers with your own donation. To make a gift, visit americares.org or follow the directions on the screen. Text your pledge. Any amount will make a difference. A benefit of you donating right now is that your donation will be matched. A group of generous donors have pledged to match the first $200,000 donated tonight. This year, everyone is at risk during the coronavirus pandemic but the most vulnerable people in every disaster, hurricanes, typhoons, droughts, wildfires, are those living in poverty. AmeriCare's mission is to save lives and improve health of those affected by poverty and disaster. Everything here in AmeriCare's distribution center, every pallet of masks, every case of medicine, all of it is provided at no cost to health centers for patients who cannot afford or access care. This is the foundation of America's mission to improve health during the COVID-19 pandemic and every single day. But basically it all starts where you're standing, Tony, in AmeriCare's Global Distribution Center. Here to tell us more is someone I've admired through my childhood, a woman who's shown us the powerful magic of strong female characters, actor, producer, and director, Melissa Joan Hart. For most of us, healthcare means medicine. After all, medicine treats and prevents illness. Ideally, every clinic, health worker and patient, everyone around the world would have reliable access to the medicine and supplies they need. 
That's what AmeriCares calls medicine security, and it's a goal worth striving for. But two billion people lack access to medicine and critical supplies. Imagine not having an antibiotic to treat your child's pneumonia, or insulin to treat your own diabetes. In just over 40 years, AmeriCares has delivered nearly $18 billion in medicine and medical supplies to help people affected by poverty and disaster. People have no other route to health. For millions of people every year, medicine security begins here at AmeriCares' 55,000 square foot distribution center. Millions of treatments and supplies are managed here every year. Last year, enough medicine for nearly 10 million prescriptions and 16 million supplies. In 2020, of course, AmeriCare's life-saving shipments include the protective supplies that are so critical on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic. I'm Juan Santana, Senior Manager of the AmeriCare's Distribution Center of Operations. I'm so proud to manage the team here at AmeriCare's Distribution Center. I've been part of the organization for 12 years. We've responded to emergencies in the past, more than 30 disasters each year, in fact. But the COVID-19 pandemic is different from a hurricane or earthquake thousands of miles away. The pandemic affects us too. We are concerned about our health and the health of our families. But at the same time, we know how important every shipment is. The team is remarkable, shipping out 250 tons of COVID-19 safety supplies, including 10 million masks, gloves, gowns, and disinfectants in just six months. Everything health centers need to battle COVID-19 is shipped from here to hundreds of clinics across the United States and 20 countries around the world. Thanks to the AmeriCare's Distribution Center team, health workers around the world have the protective gear to stay safe now, during the pandemic, in their time of greatest need. Before, we didn't have any shields, we didn't have any goggles, we didn't have, we have, I remember when your shipment came in, I had two isolation gowns left. So having those masks allows us to continue the work that we were already doing and also meet this current demand and this current need. And so receiving donations just has been paramount to keeping us in operation. To all these organizations that think about the needy when they are working on their distribution line, because they're not only making a better community, but they're really touching people's lives. They may not see their faces, but we do. AmeriCares is, is not just helping us to get to be safe, to provide care. AmeriCares is helping us to keep our door open and serve this bigger community. What we do here supports health workers in the United States and around the world. We know every shipment saves lives. We take pride in helping the helpers, frontline nurses, doctors, and technicians. And we're so appreciative to those who have our back, folks like you. Thank you. As you can see, AmeriCare's response to COVID-19 continues in the United States, Colombia, El Salvador, Haiti, India, Liberia, Peru, the Philippines, and more. As well as critical supplies, AmeriCare's support includes skills training and programs that address mental health to help health workers and first responders stay safe and deal with the trauma and loss of this pandemic. Your support makes that happen. To donate, visit americares.org or follow the instructions on your screen to text your pledge right now. AmeriCare's efficiency will make your donation go far. More than 98% of AmeriCare's resources support health programs. AmeriCare's distribution center is a hub for global health. Last year, the team there sent nearly 10,000 shipments worldwide. Many of those shipments to clinics in the United States, where AmeriCares helps more than 1,000 partners provide health care in low-income communities. There are a few things more urgent than health, especially for people who can't afford health care and face barriers at every turn. I've had health crisis, and I know that health is fundamental to everything, to family, school, work, and strong communities. But to provide health care, clinics have to understand the whole person, including life experience. Let's go to Atlanta, Georgia, where WWE superstar Xavier Woods is going to show us how one clinic addresses all aspects of health. Three miles from downtown Atlanta, just past the Thumbs Up Diner, is Good Samaritan Health Center. Here's where grocery clerks, landscapers, and truck drivers, my hardworking neighbors, come to get their health care. 
At Good Samaritan Health Center, we see individuals and families who are at 200% or less of the federal poverty line. Our patient population is very diverse. We have patients who are immigrants, we serve the working poor, we serve students, we serve newborns, and we serve uh, specifically a homeless population. Employment, housing, education, food, and community also make the difference between good health and a lifetime of disease. Centuries of oppression, classism, and racism create ill health all on their own. But Good Samaritan is working to change that too. We started asking all of our patients about social determinants of health, asking questions like, have you not been able to afford enough food for your family in the past month? Have you missed medical appointments because you don't have transportation? And I think this changes who we are as providers and as a team here at Good Samaritan, but it also helps our, our patients understand that we care about all of it. Good Samaritan provides cooking classes, a wellness center, farmer's market, dental care, and counseling of all types, including financial counseling. Something that I've learned here is to keep on reiterating, you deserve this. You deserve to be well. You deserve to be housed. You deserve to, you know, uh, go back to school. You deserve to fulfill some of those dreams that have been buried for so long. Um, and you deserve to have quality life. and in quality um, medical care. When I walk through the door and I feel that poem, uh, the smile of the, of the folks at the front desk, the smile of the people coming through, the nurses, the PAs, it was just, you can feel the difference knowing that these people care and love what they do. And that's what I like about them because they took, they take you in and they bring you right in as you're a human being. You need help. And we're here to help. AmeriCare's partners with Good Samaritan providing health programs that help staff as well as medicine and medical supplies for patients. As we first got started with knowing AmeriCares, it was through the medication program. And we use that because patients can't afford medication. We're not going to come up with a treatment plan that you can't afford to implement when you leave our office. We've had this amazing opportunity to partner with AmeriCares in an even larger way that from top to bottom throughout the culture of our clinic, this transformation process has enabled us to do the work we do better. AmeriCare supports 1,000 health centers like Good Samaritan all around the United States, serving more than 7 million patients. Good Samaritan and AmeriCare knows quality health care changes lives. AmeriCare supports the heroes at Good Samaritan. Health heroes like Brianna, Chef Marlo, Natalia, and Veronica, and patients like Marcia and Richard. And that's the goal of it all at the end of the day, to make sure that our patients are getting the best possible care that they could anywhere in the nation. In the United States, seven million people rely on the safety net clinics in AmeriCare's network. Clinics like Good Samaritan. And AmeriCare's support in the U.S. doesn't stop there. AmeriCare's also responds to disasters, including just this year, Hurricanes Sally and Laura, and the devastating wildfires in the Western states. Your donation makes sure that America's relief will reach disaster survivors, including people displaced by hurricanes and wildfires. You can donate at any time by visiting americares.org or by following the text to give instructions on your screen right now. Thank you. Every year, 160 million people are affected by disasters around the world. And not all of those are natural disasters. War, violence, economic emergencies put lives at risk too. AmeriCares responds to more than 30 disasters every year, including the crisis in Venezuela, where politics has created severe shortages of food, medicine, and jobs. Millions have fled that country. Here is actor Natalia Reyes to tell us more and to introduce us to one doctor who has dedicated his life to helping others. Hello, I'm Natalia Reyes. While I travel all over the world to work as an actor, my heart is always here, in my home, Colombia. It's a beautiful country, from the mountains to the endless coastline. But most of all, 
I love Colombia's people. I'm especially proud that Colombia has welcomed nearly 2 million Venezuelans who have fled turmoil in their country. In Venezuela, life is almost impossible. Citizens are under constant threat from violence and insecurity, as well as a lack of food, medicine, and essential services. Colombians are generous and welcoming and are helping their Venezuelan neighbors with food, jobs, housing, and medical care. Dr. Kevin Pacheco is one Colombian who has devoted his life to providing care for Venezuelans. He works in one of America's 10 clinics near the border. Patients come to the clinics with conditions that have gone untreated. La atención médica de Americares en la población migrante venezolana en La Guajira es sumamente importante porque son pacientes huérfanos, no tienen seguridad social en su país, migran solamente a buscar eso, porque no tienen un medicamento para una hipertensión arterial, diabetes, entre otras enfermedades crónicas o no crónicas, infecciosas también. Dr. Pacheco provides pregnant women with prenatal care care that would be impossible to find in Venezuela. For this patient, healthcare is a chance at a full productive life. Because of Dr. Pacheco and Americas, thousands of Venezuelans are getting the medical care they need at no cost. Mi resiliencia viene de haber conocido tantas personas con problemas. Mis problemas no son nada comparados para todos los que tienen mis pacientes y los migrantes. Dr. Pacheco and his Colombian colleagues also work in mobile health centers, bringing medicine and medical services to Venezuelans living in remote areas so that they have access to care. Exponer mi vida para salvar a los demás independientemente del riesgo para mí es eh, un logro. Me encanta hacerlo. Me encanta ayudar a las demás personas porque yo sé que no tienen una capacidad de ir a cualquier parte que le brinden una atención. Mental care is included. Families lost everything, and many need help with stress, anxiety, and trauma. The COVID-19 pandemic limits how staff can interact with patients. No more hugs or handshakes. Instead, there are hand washing stations and lessons that help keep everyone safe. Staff refer patients to testing if needed. When COVID llegó a Colombia, yo pensé de inmediato. ¿Cómo voy a hablarle a mis pacientes para que estén prevenidos? Enseñar lavado de manos, enseñar elementos de protección personal, a utilizar el tapabocas. Kevin is a husband and father, devoted to his young family and passionate about music. But caring for others, for those who have nothing, fulfills his life. Lo más bonito de todo esto es poderle entregar a esas personas algo sin esperar nada a cambio nosotros de ellos y saber que se van a ir felices de nuestra sede de Americas Guayra. Bueno, este trabajo ha cambiado mi vida porque me ha enseñado a observar las necesidades de los demás. Me ha tocado el corazón y me ha enseñado que sí podemos dar más. Así tengamos poco o mucho, siempre hay más que dar para las personas. Every day, Dr. Pacheco and the Americas team in Colombia are changing lives saving lives and delivering hope to thousands of people. Mi más grande orgullo es que la gente venga a mí, me vea y me diga gracias por lo que pudiste hacer por mí. Eso no tiene comparación con ningún dinero del mundo. Mi mayor orgullo es decir puedo ayudar a la gente siendo médico. I saw Americare's work firsthand in the Caribbean when we traveled to my country, the Dominican Republic. It's a country very close to my heart. I was raised there. I have family there. Working with AmeriCares, I saw poverty that affects physical and mental health. I saw the positive effects of health care firsthand. Your donation to AmeriCares does that. It changes lives. Take this opportunity to visit americares.org and make a donation or follow the text to give instructions on the screen. Thank you. In Jordan, Syrian refugees suffer from the trauma of violence that they've witnessed and the stress of leaving their home. Let's head to Jordan to meet a Syrian grandfather whose health suffered when he lost his home in Syria. I'm Rashad Massoud, AmeriCare's Chief Programs Officer. 
More than 79 million people around the world are displaced. Some, like Venezuelans in Colombia, have left their homes in search of food, medicine, and a life free from violence. Others are climate refugees, fleeing drought, floods, and fires. In the Middle East, 5.5 million people have escaped civil war in Syria. Jordan has welcomed 650,000 Syrians, most of whom live alongside Jordanians in cities or small towns near the border. But even safe in Jordan, Syrians live with constant reminders of what they've left behind. وقت اللي جيت من سوريا لانه الشيء اللي شفناه هناك يعني الحرب واهوال الحرب بعض مرات بتصير معنا مثل كوابيس بيتي جاء صاروخ ابني كان هناك ومرته بس الله الحمد لله هو طلعوا من البيت ما في شيء قبل نص ساعه اجى الصاروخ نص البيت نعت ونعت نفسيا احيانا وقت اللي بتعب نفسيا بتضايق نفسيا نتيجة ظروف بجوز نتيجة بشعط معي الضغط والسكري. Years of stress and anxiety take a toll on health, worsening heart disease and diabetes. AmeriCares collaborated with Jordan's Royal Health Awareness Society to address trauma and loss for Syrian refugees and Jordanians. AmeriCares added mental health services to an existing chronic disease program resulting in health improvements. The Syrians and Jordanians who learned stress reduction techniques lost weight, lowered their blood pressure and blood sugar, and enjoyed greater social support. Participants eased the physical and mental effects of trauma. Mustafa will never regain what he has left behind in Syria, but now he has the capacity to enjoy what he does have, his garden and family especially his grandson. For all of us, good health includes mental health. Around the world, AmeriCare's disaster response programs include support for mental health. Here in Jordan, one grandfather knows the value of such support. He lives it every day. Thank you, Dr. Masood. That is such an innovative approach to physical and mental health. Now, AmeriCares and Ross have a proven method of improving health wherever people are suffering from trauma and loss. You know, when I visited AmeriCares Hurricane Maria programs in Puerto Rico, I learned that, especially for health workers, recovery must include mental health care. Doctors and nurses are on the front lines, but they're also survivors themselves. The stress on health workers is especially profound during this COVID-19 pandemic. That's why AmeriCares provides COVID-specific mental health support for frontline health workers. You can help AmeriCares expand these important programs by donating anytime during this program. Just visit americares.org or follow the text to give instructions on your screen. This program celebrates the 60 million health workers worldwide. They are heroes for the work they do on the front lines of COVID-19 and on the front lines of poverty and other disasters. And for that reason, they are the recipients of this year's Bob and Lila McCauley Humanitarian Spirit Award, which is named after AmeriCare's founders and honors courage and commitment in the service of others. Last year, a hero of mine received the special award, CNN Chief Medical Correspondent, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. I am so proud to be able to introduce him right now, Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Last year, I was tremendously honored to receive the AmeriCares Humanitarian Spirit Award. But this year, I'm even prouder to present this award to 60 million of my colleagues, the world's healthcare workers. The COVID-19 pandemic has certainly shown the world how critical healthcare workers are. They're at the front lines of infectious diseases, and they must perform at the highest level consistently. 
In this pandemic, we've asked doctors and nurses especially to work long hours, to adopt new protocols, to be flexible, and assume tremendous risk to themselves and to their families. In the United States alone, nearly a thousand healthcare workers, mostly nurses, have died from COVID-19. Created in memory of AmeriCare's founders, the Humanitarian Spirit Award honors outstanding individuals who exemplify extraordinary courage and commitment to humanitarian endeavors and making a real difference in the world. So it is really fitting that this year's award goes to the world's healthcare workers. Now again, there's 60 million of them, but we wanted to talk about five who we think are really representative of what this award means. Nizamuddin Abdil Karim Sheikh. Uh, he spent years in poor health. and In his own words, he was just wandering in the slums of Mumbai, India. When his health improved with care from an AmeriCare's mobile health center, he wanted to share his experience of finding health and hope. Now, Nizamuddin is a trained Arigo Mitra. That means health friend. He encourages his neighbors to seek care at AmeriCare's mobile health centers. Community health volunteers are the very foundation of health in many countries. So thank you, Nizamuddin, for demonstrating the power of health. In Puerto Rico, Hurricane Maria was followed by months without electricity, a financial crisis, and then a swarm of earthquakes that drove people into the streets trying to seek safety. Now Puerto Ricans are dealing, like the rest of the world, with COVID-19. Through it all, Dr. Miguel Marrero and the team at AmeriCares have provided mental health training to thousands of health workers and first responders. This training can really serve as a lifeline for health workers who care for survivors and they must endure the stress of the disaster themselves. It's a true burden and it's one that Dr. Marrero and the team know all too well. So thank you, Dr. Marrero, for meeting mental health needs during multiple disasters. When COVID-19 emerges a threat, Dr. John Keen Ziloy didn't wait for cases to arrive in Haiti. He asked his community at St. Rock Health Foundation Clinic to wear masks and to increase hand washing. And they did. That demonstrates a trust that Dr. Eloy has built with staff and patients in his 11 years as medical director. Dr. Eloy empowers everyone around him, from students to health volunteers to medical staff, to live a healthy life. Thank you, Dr. Eloy, for being a catalyst for health in your own community. Dr. Maria Mayumi Giliana is a family practice doctor in the Philippines, but when disaster strikes, she cares for survivors as a volunteer member of the AmeriCare's emergency medical team. Dr. Giliana knows the people most affected by disasters are living well below the poverty line. Often the only care they receive is what she will provide. Dr. Giliana listens to her patients, offering a space for loss and grief. Such important work, and we wanted to thank you as well, Dr. Giliana, for supporting patients' physical and emotional needs. Javon Muhammad was already dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic when Hurricane Laura swept through her community. Ms. Muhammad is the CEO of SWLA Center for Health in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Her community is mostly black, mostly poor and elderly, and therefore very vulnerable in every disaster. After the storm, Ms. Muhammad established her damage clinic as a community relief hub. Ms. Muhammad recognizes that her community will not heal until they address the condition that impacts health here every single day, poverty. If we prioritize the health care of poor people in poor communities in the way that we prioritized COVID, if we make that a national agenda that we must make people well, then um, we will be doing fine. Poverty is a public health crisis. So thank you, Javon Muhammad, for your dedication and your advocacy for health for the most vulnerable. And let me just say thanks to all the healthcare workers out there. This has been an unprecedented time. And in so many places around the world, you have risen to this unprecedented challenge. So on behalf of all of us, thank you. You truly deserve this honor. I always wanted to be a WWE superstar. When I was a kid, my heroes wore championship titles. Today, I am a WWE superstar, and kids think of me as a hero. But let's talk about heroes. The real heroes today, the true heroes, don't wear championship titles. They wear masks and gloves. They're doctors, nurses, everyone out there fighting COVID-19. As WWE superstars, we know how important health is. 
sickness and injury can put you on the sidelines. Health workers are always ready to help anyone and everyone. We are going to win the fight against coronavirus. Because the real heroes are on our side. Today, my heroes are health workers on the front lines in the battle against COVID-19. Everyone supports AmeriCares. Thank you, WWE superstars, and thanks to the WWE for their longstanding support for AmeriCares work. AmeriCares has more than 40 years of experience delivering health. That's one reason why superstars and everyday heroes give to AmeriCares. So join me in supporting AmeriCares health programs. Your donation provides resources for health workers and health programs for those living in poverty and who are affected by disaster. Make a donation now by visiting americares.org or text your gift by following the instructions on your screen. Let's get health to more people who need it. Jackie, this year, because we can't travel, we're taking this virtual trip around the world to visit America's programs and meet the people we help with our support. We're meeting people who demonstrate the power of health. Mustafa and Jordan, Dr. Pacheco in Colombia, Marcia and Richard in Atlanta, and we're gonna to go to more places and meet more people. Now, I know you traveled with Americas last year to the Dominican Republic, right? Yeah, Tony, I met a beautiful mother who had high blood pressure during her pregnancy. Thanks to Americares, her and her beautiful baby survived. She almost lost her life. Do you know the name of her baby? Milagros, which means miracle. I remember that amazing story, Jackie. And here's a little surprise for you. You were working on an album last year when you met Anjalina and Doleni Milagro, and the team recorded you giving a very touching sneak peek performance. I am ah. by the lights. When I first saw them, they were shining so bright. Kept my voice down, never spoke up at night, but I'll tell you now. But I'll tell you that was such a special day. Thank you for showing that. That family is just an example of how powerful health is. Thank you. We're all stronger when we have access to health. No one knows that better than my friend, the president and CEO of AmeriCares, Christine Squires. Christine is leading AmeriCares as the world experiences unprecedented challenge and change. Yet AmeriCares is helping more people in more ways. I'm Christine Squires, President and CEO of AmeriCares. March 14th was my first day as President and CEO, and while the transition was planned, it certainly didn't happen the way I imagined. That's because on March 14th, COVID-19 shut down just about everything. My first task as CEO was to tell AmeriCares 500 global staff not to go to their offices, but at the same time, ask them to work harder than ever to confront this pandemic. We've all made changes to keep ourselves and our communities safe. And while it's been incredibly stressful, it's also proof that together we do have the power to change, not just our own lives, but the lives of others. I remain an optimist, and I think that together we can do even more. What's impressed me to no end is how much more AmeriCare staff is doing. AmeriCare's distribution center team hasn't missed a day. And even with added safety measures, 
they've increased their output, shipping more than 250 tons of COVID supplies, and that's on top of their regular shipments of aid. Thousands of health workers around the world are safer because of this team's diligence and because of your support. And I think that together with your help, we can do even more. AmeriCare's technical team also retooled our training programs to make them COVID specific and has now delivered COVID safety education to more than 20,000 health workers. I think that together we can do even more from El Salvador to India to right here in Connecticut. Staff made the pivot to telehealth holding more than 30,000 patient consultations by telephone. Each call a lifeline for patients who couldn't afford health care. Enough? I don't think so. Together, we must and can do more to improve the lives of more people. 2020 has certainly proven one thing. Health is fundamental. Without health, we are held back as individuals, as a nation, and as a global community. Disaster, poverty, and systematic racism all create barriers to health. And without equitable access to health care, people suffer needlessly. And so I ask you, together, can we do more? Let's do more to protect the health of families who can afford health care by delivering them the medicines they need. Let's protect the health of those who are right now dealing with the aftermath of wildfires, hurricanes, and floods. Let's protect frontline health workers. No health worker should risk their life or suffer years of post-traumatic stress because they lacked basic supplies. Let's act now to support health workers. Let's do more. I thank you for being a health hero, and I urge you to join us and join together in protecting the health of millions of people. Join me in supporting AmeriCares. Thank you. Thank you for your leadership. I'm inspired to see how AmeriCare saves lives and improves health in so many places. Health workers deserve our support. Let's admit it, there's nothing like a badass doctor or nurse who can survive a 195 mile per hour typhoon, rescue her neighbors and show up to work the next day. Doubt me? Well, you haven't met Rosalie Ramos Uy. Let's go to the Philippines and she could show us how it's done. Yolanda was really very, very scary. And it was a, a battle to survive. So when Yolanda came, I was at home with my family. And in our house, there were actually about 40 people in our house. So we heard a lot of screaming, a lot of screaming in our second floor. So I opened our door to the terrace and I saw a lot of people crawling. We went to help them come into our house. We counted about 120 people in our house. So most of them without clothes, so we just have to give them anything that's dry that could help them. To keep the the people come, we pray the rosary all at once. The water subsided and they went back to what was left of their houses. And then they told us that the hospital was destroyed. We decided to still continue to go to the hospital with the water and all the distractions that we see. We, you can see dead bodies lying. Everything was destroyed. And then we saw patients still in, lying outside of the hospital, but they were already preparing to go home because the hospital was destroyed and there's no electricity and nothing. Nobody's in there. So we tried to help some of the people that were coming because they were asking for injections or just dressing of their, of their wounds. So since it's about to get dark again, so we started our journey once again back to our home. Came home, 
very, very tired and very, very much depressed because of the situation. I think with the work that we have done, the people are more or less equipped in facing typhoons and other disasters, but we still need more. I have a, a big hope for all of us to be well equipped and of course be able to save more lives. Good health means you are able to be of help not only to yourself but also to other people. Nurse Rosalie knows how vulnerable the Philippines is to earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and typhoons like Yolanda. That's why she's made sure to include her staff in America's disaster preparedness training. I remember when Yolanda hit the Philippines. Sadly, the number of destructive storms and weather-related events is only increasing. In the U.S. alone, experts predict up to 25 named storms, including hurricanes this year. Wildfires, drought, and heat waves are also more intense and more frequent. To confront the health effects of climate change, we have to work together. It will take all of us. But it will also take the power of partnerships to help tackle this daunting task. And one such partnership is between AmeriCares and the conservation organization African Parks. The Earth's climate is changing. Weather events are growing more extreme. Droughts are more severe and wildfires are bigger and more destructive. Around the world, the people most affected by climate change already bear the burden of poverty and oppression. That's true everywhere, in Louisiana, Bangladesh, the Philippines, and in Malawi. AmeriCares knows healthy communities must be climate resilient communities. Health of the environment and human health are closely linked. Wild landscapes produce clean air and water, sequester carbon, and provide food security and safe places. These places can be the last line of defense for millions of people. AmeriCares and conservation organization African Parks are improving the health of people in and around Malawi's protected areas. African Parks manages 18 parks in 11 countries covering over 53,000 square miles. AmeriCares and African Parks are working on establishing corridors of human health and well-being, helping deliver the benefits of well-run, protected areas to the people who need them the most. AmeriCares is working side-by-side -side with communities to make healthcare accessible, identifying barriers to care, and supporting health workers breaking those barriers. Together, we're building resilience to climate change, investing in the future. Imagine a world where we protect wildlife, precious natural habitats, and the health of people, creating a sustainable future for all. AmeriCare's mission is to save lives and improve the health of people affected by poverty and disaster so they can reach their full potential. For that to happen, health has to be at the center of every conversation in every community. One community that has put health at the center and is thriving because of it is Zondo, Liberia. For more than a decade, until 2003, Liberia was in the grips of a deadly civil war. Then, in 2014, Ebola struck the West African country. The health system, already fragile, was devastated. Liberia is a country of 5 million people and after Ebola was left with just 200 doctors. That's only one doctor for every 25,000 people. Everyone suffered. Women were especially at risk. Pregnancy could just as easily result in death as in new life. The one they call Martha Lee, she died from thin A pregnancy. At that time, there was no cleaning. 
Even a patient I'm nursing to help her. She died from the same thing a pregnancy. You want to delay her to the nearby house I have passed away. He wasted her time in bringing her here now. She died. The two girls now were my best friends. We pray to God for cheese to come. After responding to the Ebola crisis, Americas worked to strengthen Liberia's health system, opening a warehouse in the capital and working with community clinics in rural areas. Americas renovated and revitalized the clinic in Zondo, where Martina lives. Now, Zondo has trained medical staff, a pharmacy, maternal and prenatal care, and an ambulance. The people that America brought here, they are good set of people. They are helpful to us. We bless in Zondo. Families now have access to essential medicines Women have access to prenatal vitamins and family planning services. Nurses and midwives now receive training from Americas, so we can have healthy mothers and babies. Bildin is the school principal in Zondo. He knows that good health is a strong foundation for the growing community. The school, the clinic, the church, they are all here. We really have a big dream for this place here. I pray that someday we'll have a high school here and even a college. Running water, radio station, hospital. I have a big dream. I'm Erica Hill, CNN anchor and national correspondent and a proud member of the AmeriCare's Board of Directors. In this live stream, we've been around the world and met health heroes, the doctors, nurses, and volunteers who are committed to providing care for the most vulnerable. We met refugees without a home who find care at AmeriCare's clinics from doctors like Dr. Kevin Pacheco. We saw communities threatened by climate change that are building resilience with help from AmeriCares and health workers like Rosalie Ramos Oye. In Liberia, we heard how a health clinic can be a community's foundation, providing an opportunity for growth. And in Atlanta, we met people affected by racism and poverty who are finally getting the health care they need without the barrier of discrimination. In each instance, for health to be possible, clinic doors must be open. Health workers must be skilled and safe to do their jobs effectively and protect themselves and their families. AmeriCares is there every step of the way. Here in Stamford, Connecticut, just a mile from AmeriCares Global Distribution Center, the doors of AmeriCares Free Clinics are open. For the low-income uninsured, AmeriCares Free Clinics are a beacon of hope, offering patient-centered, quality health care. This clinic is a hub for skilled volunteers, doctors, nurses, translators, and more, who give their time so their neighbors can be healthy. Local hospitals and labs donate their services. Everyone here is working hard and working differently to keep themselves and patients safe. Staff provide care and advice on the phone and, when they can, see patients in person. Here, staff and volunteers are a community of care that changes lives. Everyone here knows health is an investment in the future, a shared future. The COVID-19 pandemic has made it clear. We're all in this together. And together, we've done so much. Together, let's do more for each other. With your help, AmeriCares can do more. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. I am so proud to serve on this AmeriCares board alongside you. And thank you, Jackie, for being my co-host on this live stream to showcase health heroes around the world. 
Thank you so much, Tony. And thanks to everyone who is watching. Please share this video with your friends, family, and colleagues. I've enjoyed so much meeting health workers and health heroes from around the world. I can see we're all the same, with the same hopes and dreams for ourselves, our families, and our communities. While 2020 has shown that poor health can be our undoing, it's also shown us that good health has the power to bring us all together. With good health, anything is possible. Children can go to school and learn. With good health, parents can work and make their families strong. With good health, communities can be vibrant and thrive. With good health, anything is possible. So let's do more and let's do more together. We are one global community. We all have one goal, health. Thank you so much for joining us. Stay healthy.
Now he's up. Thank you. 